I'm K. And I'm Co. And this is the Keiko Show. Show. When we both came to Symbiosis University, we were quick friends. Right from the start, we knew that we could succeed if we just stuck together. I take K around all around campus on my back. She's pretty small after all. Whenever Co gets a little parasite, I come and eat it. Pest control for her, food for me. Amazing deal in my opinion. Some people aren't as lucky as us though. Because their roommates take advantage of them. Like our friend Brick and his roommate? Yeah, Brick says Brick pays for the food and bills and his friend just feeds off of him. How rude. Brick is so sick most of the time because of him. But it's not always so bad. Do you know Remy from down the hall? Oh yeah, the remora that's always hanging around sharks and fish. Remy always eats their leftovers, but they don't really mind. These are all examples of symbiotic relationships. Sim means together, and bio means life. So symbiotic relationships describe the relationships between two individuals that live together. This concept is very important because the way organisms interact with each other allows them to acquire better survival skills. The large network of organisms working together can be really helpful in influencing evolution. Think of how eukaryotic cells came to exist. Mitochondria and chloroplasts were once prokaryotes that were eventually engulfed by other prokaryotes. That is called the endosymbiosis theory. Symbiosis can also influence an increase in biodiversity. In many cases, one organism gets a survival, a survival benefit from a relationship, while the other gets negatively affected. A one-sided relationship can kill many animals, and despite how sad that sounds, it can help population balance. Symbiosis happens around us everywhere, all the time. Some symbionts need a symbiotic relationship to survive, which is called obligate symbiosis, while other symbionts can live independently if they had to, which is faculative symbiosis. The five main types of symbiotic relationships are mutualism, commensalism, parasitism, predation, and competition. First is mutualism. This is when both organisms benefit. Think of friends living together and splitting responsibilities, like me and Kate. A good example of this is flowers and bees. Bees collect nectar and pollen and spread them from flower to flower, allowing the bees to eat and the flowers to reproduce. Next, we have commensalism, which is when one animal benefits while the other isn't affected. An example for this could be birds building their nests in trees. The birds have somewhere to live and lay their eggs while the tree isn't helped or harmed. The third relationship is parasitism. That's when one individual benefits while the other is harmed. Think of a dog and fleas. The flea lies on the dog's skin and feeds on its blood, which makes the dog very sick. Another example is mosquitoes and a human. Similar to fleas and dogs, the mosquito bites the person and feeds off of their blood. So the mosquito benefits from the nutrients in their blood, while the human can get diseases from the mosquito. The next relationship is predation. This has the same positive-negative impact as parasitism. However, in parasitism, an organism lives within the body of a host, and in predation, an animal hunts another animal for food. A common prey-predator relationship is wolves and elks. If you look at a graph of the density of these two populations, you can see that they grow inversely. As the wolf population increases, the elk population decreases because more elk are being eaten. But as the elk population decreases, wolves have less food, causing their population to decrease, and the elk population begins to rise again. And the last relationship is competition. Competition has a negative effect on both organisms because they have to fight for the same resources. For example, white-tailed deer may monopolize vegetation, which can cause small birds to lose food and habitation. So that's symbiosis. Whether both organisms are benefiting or both are harmed, symbiotic relationships have an important role in maintaining a stable ecosystem. Predation can stop populations from growing too much, and competition can cause animals to develop better survival skills. And mutualism and commensalism can also give animals survival advantages, while also encouraging animals to connect and increase biodiversity. Well, that's all for now. See you next time.